Find the critical Z alpha divided by two value given the following confidence levels, 92, 96, 94, 97%. So we saw in the last video how to use a t-table to find critical Z alpha divided by two values. But now we're gonna to learn to use the Z table to find these Z values. So 92%, 96, 94, 97, each of those values cannot be found on a t-table, so we're, we have no choice but to use the Z table to find them. All right, so the logic of the critical Z alpha divided by two values should be mentioned again, just to make sure we're clear on what it means to find these things. We're trying to find, remember, a Z score located here on the curve, on the upper right-hand side. We're trying to find a z-score that would leave alpha divided by two area in the tail, right? Alpha divided by two goes down here as the subscript notation. So that's where we get this notation z alpha divided by two from. So we're trying to figure out what z-score corresponds to this location on the number line. A location where alpha divided by two, or half of alpha in other words, is located in the tail. Well, remember that confidence level, confidence level, and alpha have a special relationship. They have to add up to 100%. So we have 92% confidence level. Our alpha, of course, has to be the leftover 0.08% to add up to 1 or 100%, right? And if you have 96, right, then this must be 0.04. And if it's 94%, then this must be 6% or 0 0.06. And of course, if we're dealing with 97, then this must be 0 0.03 or 3%. So that is the pattern, the relationship, right? And if that's the case, we can certainly figure out what alpha divided by 2 is. In fact, let's start with this very first example. If alpha is 8%, what's alpha divided by 2? It would have to be 4%, right? So 4%, which is the same as 0 0.04, right? And if this is 4%, can we figure out what this area from here to here is? Well, sure. If the whole half of the curve is 50, if I take away 4 from that, I get 46%, right? And 46% as a decimal is 4,600. And so there I have it. I have the area from this line to the center. Why do I care about that line or that area? Because of course, when I look at my Z table, we know that it's that area that is associated with the Z scores, right? So I have to know this area in order to figure it out. So that's kind of the approach. You take half of alpha, put it in the tail area, figure out what this area is, and that'll give you the solution. However, you'll see that there's a faster way to do it, actually, if you use this simple algorithm, which I'm about to show you. I've written it down for you to copy down. The easiest way to find Z, Z critical values using the Z table is to simply divide the confidence level by 2 and then look up the result on the Z table. For example, if I take 92% as a decimal, 0.92, and I divide it in half, I get my 0.4600, and that's what I have to look up on the table. So there's no need to do this actual drawing. We can do it all analytically. We can just take each of these numbers as a decimal, divide it in two, and look that result up on the Z table. The answer that we find is the critical Z value that we're looking for. So let's go to the table and do each of these by looking up half of those values each time. And we'll end up filling in one, two, three, four critical values. Okay, so we're looking for half of 0.92, or in other words, 0 0.4600. We're going to be looking for that value in the body of the table to find the corresponding z-score. So as I look down this column, I don't see anything close to 4600 yet, so I'm going to move the table up a little bit to get to something more nearby that value. Okay, so when I get to this row 1.7, I can see that we have 0.4. 4554. Five, four. Let's see if over across in that row we can find something close to 0.4600. So I see this value here, that's 0.4599. That's very close, that's just one ten thousandth away. That one's higher, and it's eight ten thousandths away, so we're going to take this value as the closest thing to 4600. That's 1.75. 1.75. Okay, so the answer for the first one we get is 
Okay, so we're looking up 4,800 now to try to find the corresponding z-score to that area. So let's try to find the closest thing to 4,800. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that this row contains the closest thing since this number is 4,772. If I go across, I see that oh, we're over 4,800 here, we're under 4,800 here. This one's just a little further away from 4,800 than this one, so we're going to take the answer 2.05, 2.05. Okay, the answer for 96% is 2.05. Let's get 94% now. Okay, so we're looking for half of 0.94, or in other words, 4,700, and we're looking for it in the body to find a corresponding z-score. Okay, so let's move this up till we see something close to that. Okay, so I think I see values in this row that are pretty close. Going across, um, 4686, 4693, 4699, that's real close to 4700. So it's going to be 1.88. 1.88. Answer for 94 is 1.88. Let's go back and get 97% critical Z value now. Okay, so now we're looking for half of 0.97, or in other words, 0.4850. So 4850 is what we're looking for. So we'll come down here and look for the closest thing to it. Um, let's scroll up so we can get some more space to find the value we're actually looking for. And I think we have enough there. So, you know, 31, 34, 36, dot, 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 all the way down to 4821. And then if we go across then from 4821, we'll be able to see that um, we have 4826, 4830, 4834, 4838, 4842, 4846, 4850, the exact number we're looking for, that's nice. That's 2.17. 2.17 then is the z-score we need. Okay, we get 2.17 as our final critical z-value for the list. Okay, there are your four answers.